Hi and welcome to this video which is the last of our videos on the integration, it's the last technique that we need to deal with and what we're going to do in this video is have a look at how we go about finding the area under a parametric curve. So, on we go. So we met parametrics earlier on and we knew that to differentiate them we had to use chain rule. Let's have a look at the equivalent for integrating which is the area of the curve and the area under any graph is given by that so we've got then the equation terms of y be y equals integrate that in between the limits. So what we've got to do is essentially adapt this for parametrics. Now in this particular one, the equation is there, is y is defined in terms of x, the limits are defined in terms of x. What we've got to do is adjust this so all of that is defined in terms of the parameter, which is, that's in, in most cases, it'll be t. So what we're going to do is use a bit of chain rule within our integral. And what we're going to do is say, well, we've got the integral of y. And what we're going to do is change this dx, this with respect to x part. So we're going to adjust it so it says with respect to t. And the way we're going to do that using chain rule is by to take that bit there and write it like that. So what we've got here, hopefully you're happy that if we've got dx dt times by dt, that would be the same as just dx. So that becomes our standard result where we've got um, the equation for y, and that's going to come from our parametric definition, from the y equals part of that. We've then got to differentiate the definition for the x. That's come from our, our second um, parametric equation. And everything has got to be done now in terms of t. So that might mean that the limits that we'd have here that were originally in terms of x have got to be expressed in terms of t. And there you go. That is your standard result for integrating a parametric. So... Here we go, let's have a look at an example. So we've got to find the area under that parametric curve, and that curve is x equals t squared, y equals 2t bracket 3 minus t. So on we go. So essentially we are integrating between those two values. You can see down here our x value at this point is 9, and down here is 0. So that's where we've got these values in terms of x. And so what we're going to do first of all is change the limits. So let's start with our lower limit. Here we go x is 0. So when x is 0, we've got t equals 0. And for our upper limit, we've got x is 9. And so when x equals 9, t is going to be square root 9, which is plus or minus 3. So we've got two possible values. But as part of our definition, we're told that t is positive. So that means we've got uh, t equals 3 as being our upper limit. So what we've got now is there's our integral. And what I've done is replace the x with dx dt dt. So what we've got to do now is find out what dx dt is. Simple enough job. And then we've got to put the two bits together. So we've now got, there's my y, 2t bracket 3 minus t, times by dx dt, integrating everything with respect to t. So let's do that. Let's just do a bit of multiplying out. So I've got 4t squared times by the bracket. It just become a simple polynomial. Now we can do the integrating between limits. And there we go. There's our area under the curve. So the integration in that particular case came, became really simple, but it was just uh, being able to put together the two bits, y times by dx dt. On we go. Let's have a look at one that's uh, not quite so straightforward. So again, we've got the area under the curve between two limits in terms of x. So that's what we need to, to integrate. So y dx dt times y dt, or oh, sorry, with respect to t. And you'll notice that I've already done the change of limits so they're in terms of t. And you can see there in the red and the blue uh, how I've got those values for t. So we've got t equals 2 and t equals 0. So dx dt, if I integrate, try again, if I differentiate ln t plus 2, I'm going to get 1 over t plus 2. So now I'd need to do y, which is 1 over t plus 1, times by 1 over t plus 2. There it is. And straight away you're thinking, okay, I've got to integrate that. And what do you know? We've got another partial fraction. Uh, in a previous video, we said, well, partial fractions do tend to pop up within other stuff. So let's quickly deal with the partial fraction. Again, I'm going to rattle through it ever so quickly. So here we go. Here's our standard way of being able to deal with partial fractions. Let's take t equals minus 2. It leads to b equals minus 1. Having t equal minus 1 leads to a equals 1. And so there you go. There's my partial fraction. So let's express our integral 
uh, using those two separate fractions. Now let's do the integrating. So we've got ln t plus 1 minus ln t plus 2. All fairly straightforward. In between limits of 2 and 0. So put those in. Tidy the whole thing up. And we end up with our exact value being ln 3 over 2. So there we go. There's that example done. And I've got one more example to go for. Let's say again uh, an exam style question. This one has got a whole lot more going on in it. So here we go. We've got uh, a curve that's defined parametrically. We've got x equals 3 theta sine theta, y equals set cubed, uh, for values of theta between 0 and pi over 2. Um, we've got to find the exact value of k for our point p up here. And then we've got to get to a result where said, that's what we've got to integrate. And then finally, we've got to actually physically do the integrating. And again, in the exam, you'll find that it's split up so you get to the show that section here that even if you don't quite manage it in part B, you still will be able to pick up uh, marks in part C. But hopefully you'll manage part B as well, and I'm going to go through it. So, off we go, find the exact value of k. Well, what do we know at point P? Well, we know at point P that y equals 8. So therefore, we've got that from our definition from y equals sec cubed. Do some cube rooting, sec theta equals 2, which leaves us to theta equals pi over 3. We don't need to come up with the other values for theta from 0 to uh, 2 pi because we're told that theta is limited to so between 0 and pi over 2. So that's quite right. We've got theta is pi over 3. And so therefore, what's our x coordinate? Well, our x coordinate is going to be 3 times pi over 3 times by the sine of pi over 3. So what we've got this bit here is just going to be pi. Sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And so there we go. There's our x value. And so clearly that's our value for k and there's part a sorted right on we go part b show that when we try and find the value for r when we integrate it ends up as being this great big thing here so away we go first thing we've got to do is get our limit sorted so when x equals zero uh, when x equals zero here we've got theta equals zero and when x equals three pi over two that's just simply the reverse of what we did previously. We had that in the previous uh, slide. We've got theta equals pi over 3. So that's going to be our new limits. Those are going to be our values for alpha and beta. There's our standard setup for integrating parametric. So we've got y. We're going to need dx d theta. Dx d theta is going to come from here. We've got 3 theta sine theta. So we've got a product rule going on. So differentiate 3 theta, which is 3, times by sine theta, plus leave the 3 theta alone, differentiate sine. So there's dx d theta. Let's put that now together with uh, y times dx d theta between the two limits that we've got. Again, it's a show that question, so you've got to show all of this uh, very clearly each step along the way. You can't you kind of just jump steps and have any surprises jumping out. Anyway, it's got to be very clearly worked one step at a time. Now what we're going to do is do a bit of tidying up to turn this thing here into this thing up here. And the way to do that, I suspect, will be to take our set cubed theta and write that as 1 over cos cubed. And now let's have a look at what's going on. We've got, well, I've taken the 3 out the front here, so that is going to become lambda. Now let's have a look at this. We've got sine theta over cos cubed theta which hopefully you're happy is going to become tan over cos squared, because sine over cos is tan. Use one of the coses on the bottom, that leaves us with the cos squared. And then here we've got theta cos theta over cos cubed. So one cos is going to cancel out one on the top, one on the bottom, leaving us with theta over cos squared. And now hopefully you're happy that this term here, tan theta cos squared theta, is this term here. And the theta over cos squared theta is this term here. And so we've got the result that we're after. So lambda was 3, alpha was 0, beta is pi over 3. And there we go, all proved very clearly from one step to the next. Right, that's part B done. On we go, final bit, part C. Hence, find the exact value of R. Hence, so use what we had in part B. So that's the R result from part B. That's what we've now got to integrate. So let's deal with these as two separate integrals because neither of them are going to be particularly straightforward. So we've got to integrate theta sec squared theta. So here we go. How are we going to integrate that? 
Well, the way to go about that one is going to be doing it by parts. So let's u equal theta. So du d theta equals 1. dv d theta equals sec squared. And if you have a look in your formula booklet, or you know you integrate sec squared, what do you get? You get tan. So now we've got our four bits that so we can assemble our integral. So the integral of theta sec squared theta d theta is uv minus the integral of v du, uh, try again, v du d theta. So what we've got to do now is we've got to integrate tan. And again, in your formula booklet, integrate tan, what you're going to get is lom sec. So that's that bit all sorted. Let's now integrate that one. Now this one is a one you can do by inspection because you'll recognize hopefully that when you differentiate um, sec squared, or sorry, diff differentiate sec, sorry, you get a version of tan. So if we differentiate sec, we get tan sec. So therefore, if I differentiate sec squared, what am I going to get? Well, bring the power to the front, that's the 2. Differentiate sec, you get tan sec, and then take one off the power, that's sec. So there we go, we've got 2, san, sorry, two tan theta sec squared theta. That one is not immediately obvious, so I mean, this is a real tough old question, but that's how you go about um, identifying what the integral is going to be, because now we, we know that by differentiating sec squared, we get 2 tan theta sec squared theta, so therefore the integral of tan sec squared is going to be half sec squared theta. Right, that's that bit all done. We've got our two separate bits, so let's put it together. So our integral becomes uh, 3 times by theta tan theta minus long sec theta plus half sec squared theta. Put in the limits, there they go, and the intention to subtract, <coughs> excuse me, and then it's just a case of tidying up. So what we've got here is 3 times pi over 3 just becomes pi, tan pi over 3 is root 3, and then we have a look at this next term here. So we've got sec pi over 3, so that's 1 over cos pi over 3, um, which is cos pi over 3 is a half, so sec would be 2, so we've got minus 3 ln 2, so that's that bit. And then the same over here, I'm sure you can figure that bit out, that's going to be 3 times by half, and then the sec squared pi over 3 is just 4. And then we've got subtraction here, we've got 3 minus 0, that bit we don't have to worry about, ln 1, that's 0 as well. So we've just got the minus 3 times by uh, half, so that's minus 3 over 2. And then the last thing to do is just to tidy it up, and all we can really tidy up is the constant terms on the end here. And that turns out to be 9 over 2. And there you go. There's your result. Now, that question, that's it, wasn't on exam paper. It is an absolute shocker. There's all kinds of crazy integrating and things going on in there. But that's it, just give you an idea of kind of the upper end of, of what you might be expected to do. Cool.